Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the midweek tune-up in the word time here at Wesley United Methodist Church, Austin, Texas, where I, Sylvester Everton Chase Jr., am the lead pastor. Once again, it's good to have you to be with us on this Wednesday, July the 20th, the middle of the week. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to share with you a word from the New, the New Testament, coming from a familiar book, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, coming down to verses 26 and 27, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. I will be reading from the New Living Translation version of the Bible, the NLT, the New Living Translation. Ephesians 4, verses 26 and 27. Follow along as I read these words. Paul is speaking to the church at Ephesus. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. And in another translation, the Messenger Bible says this, don't stay angry, don't go to bed angry, don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. But we go with this particular theme for the next few minutes. Control your anger. Control your anger. Appropriate, I do believe, because I have seen a lot of uncontrolled anger. Uncontrolled, uncontrolled anger. I heard a preacher say one time, is like jumping into your car. Then you gun the engine and you discover too late that your brakes don't work. Did we get that? Uncontrolled anger. It's like jumping into your car. Then you gun the engine and you discover after it's too late that the brakes do not work. Now the Bible says, the Bible says, from the scripture I've just read from Ephesians chapter 4, those verses 26 and 27, don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. That's the message version translation. Now, did we get that? Uncontrolled, uncontrolled anger opens the door to Satan. 
uncontrolled. Go with me. Anger opens the door to Satan. And when you open the door to Satan, it is all downhill from then. So before you say anything that you think you might regret later on, I do believe today during this time together, these few minutes, we need to ask ourselves three questions before we think we are saying something that we might regret and you can't take back later on. You hear people say all the time, I wish I hadn't said that earlier. But after you put it out there, even though you say you're sorry, it's hard to take it back because they have heard it. Control. Come on. Your anger. Uncontrolled anger would tear up your family, split up a household. Uncontrolled anger would tear your organization apart. It would split a church. Uncontrolled anger is not healthy for you and those around you. Well, I said we need to ask ourselves three questions in dealing with our anger and trying to control our anger. Because I do believe in times like these, when we are saying anything and everything right off from the top, of our mouths and heads. It is something later on I do believe we're going to wish we had not said. Well, first of all, if we are going to control our anger, here it is, here it is, the first point. The first point is the relief that you will get from venting worth the aftermath. Did we get that? That's the first question. I'm trying to control our anger. Is the relief that you will get from venting worth the aftermath? I told them something. I let them know how I felt in no uncertain terms, no uncertain words. But look, the Bible, the Bible, you don't mind me referring to the Bible, over in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, it reads in the New International Version, by sounding off, you run the risk of making the finest speech you will ever regret. One more time. By sounding off, saying it any kind of way, ugly and mean, you run the risk of making the finest speech that you'll ever regret. See, by its very nature, anger encourages exaggeration. Anger encourages exaggeration and makes you say things you can't retract. Wow. Did you hear that? Anger encourages you exaggerate. You add to it. Really pile it on. It makes you say things that you can't retract. That's what uncontrolled anger will do. Now, long after you have said what you have said the way you wanted to say it with your own choice words, long after maybe you have moved on, your harsh words, Maintain their power to wound 
and divide. Did you hear that? You might have moved on, but the person you said those choice harsh words to, they still are affected, and they still are wounded, and you are still divided one from another. Control your anger. What we are going to do, first of all, what's the first question we are going to ask? Is the relief that I will get from venting worth the aftermath that we might not be friends any longer, we might not talk anymore, we might not look each other's way, we are never never lay eyesight on one another again. Is it worth the what? Aftermath. Second, and trying to control your anger. Are we getting it? The second, the second question. Is it worth, is it really worth dragging other people into it? Is it really worth dragging other people into it? You know what you're angry about? It just doesn't just resonate and stay with you. Other people inevitably get involved. Why do you say that? Because anger inevitably affects those around you. This cause it is human to want to take sides. People would take sides. Even if they have, and I quote, no dog in the fight. People will take sides. You have drug other people into it. It's just between you and someone else, or just a few people. And the next thing you know, you got a, a group of people all involved into the situation that you are in because you were not able to what? Control your anger. Control your anger because other people will get involved and the more people involved in it, it splits and hurts more and more people. Look at certain groups, certain organizations, certain churches. See what happens if only one or two are involved in something dealing with a management of their anger. Sooner or later, everyone is what? Involved. All right. So we have asked ourselves two questions. Is the relief we get from venting worth the aftermath? It felt good at the time, but is the relief worth the venting? Is it really worth the aftermath, the fallout? And second, is it really your uncontrolled anger worth dragging other people into it? Well, when you involve other people, then I say if we involve other people, it usually is a way to feed our own ego and to justify our own bad behavior. Is it really worth dragging other people into it? Third, and then we are finished in trying to control our anger while we should, is my anger is my anger appropriate? Is my anger appropriate? Anger over injustice has always led to progress. Anger over injustice is always what led to progress. When I'm saying, when we need to ask the question, is my anger 
appropriate? Because sometimes it is easy to let small stuff like some thoughtless comments make you overreact for anger, for, for your anger to have a healthy result, it needs to be measured and constructive. Anger over some little small word, over some little issue that you can't really even define yourself is really anger that is not maybe appropriate. For Paul says, Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 6, in the New International Version, Romans 8 verse 6, it says, and I read to you, the mind, your mind, controlled by the spirit, is life and peace. Your mind controlled by the spirit Woo, is life and peace. It comes down to a control issue, your anger. What are you saying? A control response is a Christ-like response. It always wins a control response is a Christ-like response, and it always wins in the long run. Well, the text says, don't let sin, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Control your anger with a response that is Christ-like. I review those three questions. First, is the relief I get from venting worth the aftermath? Second, is it really worth dragging other people into the conflict? Third, is my anger appropriate. Think about these things this week. If you feel like you have a legitimate reason to show your anger, let it be controlled in a response that is what Christ like. It'll help you in your relationships with others, your group, your organization, your family, everyone will be blessed. For when we all get together, get the heaven, when we all get the heaven, we will speak and say, howdy, howdy. And if we have an anger problem, we won't be able to speak to each other even then. Control your anger. Take care. Keep the faith. Believers, control your anger. Make this world a better place. See you next, next Wednesday. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Come on, let us all say amen. Peace.